Hello, I'm Reverend Mark Retton, and I'm with the Bowman Charge of the United Methodist Church, located in Bowman, South Carolina, and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is going to be my sermon for tomorrow morning. That'll be uh, September 26th. I'll be preaching this at all three services. And so, uh, again, I thank you for tuning in to the channel. I uh, hope you've been one of those that have been following me on a regular basis, but if not, welcome. Uh, things are starting to cool off a little bit here in, in the Bowman, Orangeburg area. We thank the Lord for the, the cooler weather. We've uh, even had some rain, so uh, God is great. Let me tell you. Anyway, I hope you've had a great week, and again, I welcome you to uh, what I will be preaching tomorrow morning for my worship services. So let's open with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you demonstrated faithfulness in all of life, even to death on a cross. Grant unto us grace and strength to faithfully follow you all the days of our lives. We ask these things and pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, again, uh, Paul is here. <laughs> so, uh, won't be long, we'll be going into winter. Now, as most of you know, here in the Midlands, there don't get much snow. It'll get cold, but we hardly ever get snow unless we have a storm come through. But anyway, so uh, the scripture that I have chosen comes from Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter, verses 38 and 39. Again, it comes from losing an earpiece here. It comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 and 39. Hear now the inspired, inerrant word of God. Mark's writing, he says, Now John answered him, meaning Jesus, saying, Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he did not fo does not follow us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Again, that what came from Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter, verses 38 and 39. Now, I've entitled the sermon, Why Evil Exists. Lord, may the words of my mouth be pleasing to you this evening and be of inspiration to those who have gathered here for the reading and hearing of your most holy word. I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What had been happening for John to make such an uh, unusual statement and for Jesus to respond the way that he did? Well, to find the answer, we have to begin with verse 30 of this chapter. To summarize up to what verse 30 through 38 basically says, is that while the disciples were walking along the road, the disciple, they began to have a discussion as to which one of them was the greatest. After they got to where they were going, they settled in the house, and Jesus asked what they had been talking about while they were on the road. None of the disciples offered an answer. However, Jesus knew exactly what they'd been discussing. So he brought a little child among them, and then took the child into his arms, and said, as recorded in verse 37, Whoever receives one of these little children in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. That prompted John to make the statement that is in our text for today. Let's look again at John's statement. Teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name, 
and we forbade him because he does not follow us. I think what John was saying was something like, Jesus, we saw a person casting out demons using your name. And we stopped him because he wasn't a part of our group. Was John looking for a pat on the back or a well done? We're not sure. However, look again at Jesus' response. Do not forbid him. Does our text have anything to do with us today? Does anyone cast out demons today? Isn't exorcism only in the movies? The Roman Catholic Church still believes, and I still and I believe still performs exorcisms. But what about you or me? Can we cast out demons? In his sermon on our text, John Wesley has this to say, quote, Because of the unbridled power that Satan has over worldly people, St. Paul calls him the God of this world. Our blessed Lord refers to the devil as the ruler of this world. Therefore, St. John declared, quote, We know that we are God's children and that the whole world lies under the power of the evil one, end quote. People of the world live and move in the devil, just as those who are not of the world live and move in God, end quote. Wesley went on and, oh, I'm sorry, where did Satan, I got ahead of myself, where did Satan come from? Satan was actually an angel. In fact, he was regarded as one of the most beautiful of all the angels. And he had many followers. To find out what happened, we have to turn to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 12, where it's written, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. So, Satan and his angels were cast down to earth. Is there any other proof of this? In Job chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, will we read these words. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Yes, Dorothy, the devil is very much alive and well. Two years ago, the Orangeburg Covenant Group, which is a group of pastors who meet once a month, did a study about Satan. We used the book Satan, His Personality, Power, and Overthrow, written by Edward M. Bounds, to guide us. I believe the book was first published in 1905. Dr. Bounds was a Methodist preacher who also wrote many books about prayer. 
the members of that covenant group were amazed that the things that were discussed in the book concerning what was happening in the world at that time and the church were almost identical to the problems we're experiencing in the world and the church today. Wesley made this observation concerning Satan, quote, Satan is more than a subtle enemy who surprises poor souls and holds them captive to do his will. He also lives in people and guides their steps. He rules the power of their present of this present darkness and governs worldly people and all their depraved plans and actions. The enemy does not or does so by keeping control of their hearts, setting up his throne there and bringing all their thoughts into obedience to himself. He's a strong man, fully armed, who guards his castle, end quote. Wesley then continued saying, even if the, this unclean spirit is driven out of a person, he often returns and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and live there. He cannot be idle in the person he inhabits. He is constantly working among those who are disobedient. End quote. My friends, this morning as you were getting ready to enter the doors of the sanctuary, several of Satan's angels were out there asking, Can I come in with you? I made that same statement in a sermon that I pre preached concerning Satan a few month, or in a, at a different appointment many years ago. As the members of the congregation filed out at the conclusion of the service, one of the ladies looked at me and in a rather stern voice said, How dare you call us a bunch of devils? Satan possesses all those who do not know God or Jesus Christ. The way that Satan possesses them is different today than it was in the past. In the past, the devil frequently caused disease to affect bodies and uh, the souls of those who didn't believe in God. He did this without disgrace or disguise, openly and without remorse. He accomplished this mainly through what we now call superstitions. Today, the devil torments people's souls, and he does it as quietly as possible. He does this through unfaithfulness. He still uses the, did God really say that? Satan wants to drive a wedge into the relationship we have with God and Jesus. He wants us to doubt, to question if God's promises are real, and he wants us to walk away from God. Satan wants you to think that you control everything around you and your world. He wants you to idolize money and material possessions. He wants you to keep your mind on the things of this world so that you won't spend time in his holy word or thinking about God. The devil uses all his skills to make you deny his existence. That is, until he has control of you. Some of the traits exhibited by those under his control include envy, strife, deceit, gossip, slander, and hatred. Let me return to a question I asked earlier in the sermon. Can you or I cast out demons? The answer is yes, we can according to Wesley's definition of casting out demons. Wesley proclaimed that when we lead an unbeliever to Christ, we're casting out the demons that are in that person. Think about that for a moment. If you share what Jesus and God have done for you, answered 
your prayers or for healing or answered your prayers for a member of your family or a friend, and that person acknowledges his or her sin, shows remorse and actually repents of those sins, and seeks to have a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you've helped cast out the demons that once controlled that individual. Remember, we're involved in a spiritual war, right here, right now. Satan already knows that his final destination is the lake of fire, and he wants to take as many souls with him as he can. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, Jesus says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Those who do not bring people into the kingdom of God certainly separate them from it. There can be no neutral person in this spiritual warfare. Everyone is either on God's side or on Satan's side. Are you on God's side? If so, then you've been empowered to be God's messenger. If you think you don't have the right words to say, Scripture says that when you open your mouth, God will put the right words in it. He'll guide you in what to say. Just be willing to open your heart, your mind, and your mouth, and God will do the rest. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this inspiring message. We live in some very troubling times right now. Evil seems to be everywhere and evil seems to have the upper hand. Now more than ever, you need the help of your loyal servants those of us who call ourselves Christians. We need to rise up and start spreading the good news of the gospel message. And as Christians, Lord, we are called. We are called to share our faith with others. And as I've pointed out in this sermon, Satan is the ruler of this world. So there are many, many, many people who are going to criticize Christians and ridicule them. Some even attack Christians. Help us to remain true and faithful during these times, Lord. We know that as Christians, you walk with us, that you are there to be with us to guide us in, not only in our daily lives, but when we open our mouths and share what you have done for us, you will put the right words in our mouth. And as I pointed out in the last sermon, I believe, by sharing our faith with others, we're planting seeds. And as the Apostle Paul points out, he planted Apollos water. But God brought about the growth and the harvest. So again, Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon each and every one of us. We ask that you will continue to use us as your instrument to take the gospel message to this hurting world in which we live. We ask these things and pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you learned a few things, and I hope uh, this sermon made sense to you. Remember, we are in a spiritual war, and there's no neutral ground. <laughs> we're either for God or we're for Satan. You have to make a choice. You can't live with one foot in each camp. It won't work. Come Judgment Day, we will all have to answer for which way we went. And we can't say, Preacher, I'm going to wait until the last minute. I'm sure that, you know, I, I just want to enjoy life now. 
You could be dead after you take your next breath. That's reality. And those of us who are getting up there in age, we know that. We try to impress that upon the younger generation. And unfortunately, too many of these younger generation are finding that out the hard way. They're not immortal. They're not going to live forever. COVID is killing a lot of them. But a lot of them are involved in the drug situation. And there's some nasty drugs out there. Meth will kill you in a heartbeat. So again, you have to make a choice. And I hope and pray that you will ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life and take control of your life. Because I can guarantee he will watch over you. He won't remove all the trials and tribulations of this earth. That won't happen. But he'll be there with you. I can tell you that for a fact. He'll be with you through the trials and tribulations and he will guide you. And he'll make sure that you come through it. So again, I hope and pray that you will make the right choice and ask God through Jesus Christ to come into your life today. Enough. Let's close with a word of prayer, the benediction. Be bound to Christ for this day and always. Amen. Again, I thank you for tuning in to my channel and take care. God bless. Have a great week. Going to get a little bit cooler, so enjoy the cooler weather, and I hope to see you all back here again next week. God bless, take care, and God bless America.